Now let us go for classification. There are many ways that we can classify the reflexes. So depending on the number of synapses, we can classify them as monosynaptic reflexes. Examples are your stretch reflexes, which can be biceps, triceps, or knee jerks. Then comes the bisynaptic or disynaptic reflexes. An example is inverse stretch reflex. Then there may be polysynaptic reflexes like your withdrawal reflexes or crossed flexor reflex or crossed extensor reflex. Another set of classification, we can have anatomical classification. That means depending on to the location of the reflex arc center, as I was telling, you know, if the center is spinal cord, we call it as spinal reflexes. If it is uh, uh, your brainstem, it can be bulbar or midbrain reflexes. If it is the cerebellum, we call it as cerebellar reflexes. If it is your cortex, we call it as cortical reflexes. There are something called as clinical reflexes, you know, based on uh, these checking of these reflexes, you kind of look at the patients and know if there is any uh, problem with these reflexes and you grade them, you know, you kind of do the two sides of the body, you look at is you do the symmetric tests on both the sides, right and left, and you come to a conclusion knowing whether these reflexes are more or are they normal or is there any clonus present or if there is no reflex at all, what the situation is all about, okay? So if you come to the superficial reflexes, superficial reflexes, many of them examples are like plantar reflexes, corneal reflexes, light reflexes, cremastic reflexes, they all are examples of superficial reflexes. If you come to deep tendon reflexes, I have told you the examples are like biceps jerk, triceps jerk, knee jerk. They all come under deep tendon reflexes. Then is your visceral reflexes inside your body, your stomach, micturation, defecation. They all may be your visceral reflexes. There may be some abnormal reflexes present, which we may turn as the pathological reflexes. Now coming to the reflexes, we may have one more classification, which we call as the physiological classifications like flexor reflexes or extensor reflexes. This is just for the sake of classification that we are telling. Now there may be reflexes which can be either your born with, that is inborn, or you have acquired it, okay? So reflexes like uh, salivation or sucking reflex, grabbing reflex, these all reflexes you are born with. Nobody has to teach it, right? So as soon as you put something in the mouth of a baby, salivation starts, reflex salivation starts. So that's an unconditional reflex, okay? But the reflex that you acquire is called as a conditioned reflex. So if you learn something, you know, it develop, you develop this after the birth. If you do something, anything, if you do it again and, and again and again, learning, so it is involving the, your learning or training, it automatically comes, you know, like driving of a car. Initially, you are acquiring the knowledge. So you're very conscious about, you know, how to press, when should I press my clutch, when should I press my brake, when should I take my accelerator and when to change the clutches and all that, when to change the gear, at what time I'm going to do. So all that things you're very conscious. But as time passes, you learn it, you get trained to that. And so you become not so conscious. Now it has become a conditioned reflex for you. Okay. Examples are even if like you say, you know, if you uh, have taken any good food and you remember the flavor of that food, you know how it tastes, how it smells. So immediately, even by looking at that food or getting that smell of that food, since you already know about it, you are conditioned about it, you start having a reflex salivation. So such type of reflexes, which you acquire after birth, by your experience is called as conditioned reflexes.